everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a wintry Elsa design, although I think almost every Elsa design out there is relatively wintry, but for this one, she's got her hand out like this, and there's this swirly, snowflakey thing that's coming out of her palm, and it kind of has the look as if she's like shooting it out of her hand, and I really love the way it turned out. This nail is super extreme, and it's glittery, and there's little different like glitters that are embedded in the background of the nail, and then there's glitters that are on the top, so it's just very layered and very dimensional. If you are an Elsa or a Frozen fan, I hope you love this. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So here we are, we're going to begin creating an ombre on the nail. Like I said, there are a bunch of layers to this. So I've got kind of a light shimmery blue on the tip of my nail that almost completely matches my gloves, if that means anything to you. So we're going to start with that color. And then after we have that, I'm going to take a dark glittery blue and I'm going to be applying it to right like down from the top of the nail and then brush it down. And this color that I'm using isn't as opaque or as pigmented as some. So it really blends out for a ombre very nicely. And I'm going to be pressing some little silver stars into that background. So it looks like a super starry night sky, focusing them in the upper area of the nail where the darker color is and then encapsulating this nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it is nice and super strong and this also is going to make sure that those glitters are completely covered those bigger glitters especially i want to cover them so that they aren't like sticking up and get scratchy or yanked on or anything if you were to just say top coat over the those glitters if you run your finger over it or anything you'd feel them and then it wouldn't take much and they would just pop right out so that layer of encapsulation really holds those in place so now file the nail into shape and apply a layer of gel sealer over the layer of clear acrylic and then you can cure it and that is good to go so now i'm going to begin sculpting elsa's face with white acrylic and the reason I'm using white instead of going right in with a nude color is because Elsa is so incredibly pale that if you just went in straight with a nude color, it'd be too dark. And the creamy color that I have that's probably the closest to her skin tone without custom mixing a color for this design is the one that I thought was perfect for her hair. And I didn't want her hair and her skin to be the same color because they're not. And so... This is a technique that I used to do every time I sculpted a character that had a lighter skin tone is I would first go through with white and then I would do cover pink on top of that and it'd give me this really beautiful, very deep ivory skin tone. So that's what I did for Elsa because it's just so perfect for her especially and it really makes it so that her skin looks like Elsa's skin is. So I've got that first layer of white that does kind of come through and then the layer of cover pink adds just enough warmth to the nail or to that particular color that she looks like she is, you know, a person with some pigment in her skin, albeit not much. So we're going to do just a little layer of this. And so the cover pink that I'm using is one that I would typically use to say build up a nail bed area. So it's got it's when it's thick it is fairly opaque but when it's in these really thin light coats over the top of the white it kind of varies in color a little bit so where it's thicker it's going to be darker and where it's thinner it's going to be lighter so it gives you this very dimensional skin tone which actually is a lot more realistic than using a very opaque color to sculpt skin so you know depending it's more work because you have to do more than one layer to it but it really does give absolutely beautiful results so i'm going to be doing a couple layers to her face like i said so that there's some thicker areas and some thinner areas and help build up you know her different face shape add some more acrylic to her brow bone her cheekbones her chin and then to her nose as well and just build all those if you want to go absolutely crazy you can sculpt her eyes too if you want you could sculpt her mouth you could really do it all with acrylic if you were that excited about it even like eyebrows and all sorts of great stuff but i decided to keep it a little bit uh less sculpting than all of that and i would do that later with acrylic paint when we get to that particular stage so just keep building that color up and bringing it down her nose and now using an off-white color we're going to be sculpting her hair so her hair i did in multiple layers just like her face they're all the same color but to get her hair to look as uh i don't know braided and ornate as it is with all the different layers and all the different lengths that are part of her hair i'm th going to start the first layer off by just doing a very flat sort of basis of it or base for it so this first layer isn't you know doesn't have all the different levels to it but it's just to kind of get some color down to help you know bring this bring this design into view so that you can see what you're doing 
And I'm going to be doing her ear. And every time you sculpt anything with Elsa's skin at this point, you have to do a layer of white first and then go into the cover pink or it isn't going to match. And I'm going to be sculpting the first portion of her dress with a very glittery teal. And this is a color that I've had for a really long time and I absolutely love it. But it is a little particular to work with uh, versus some of my newer glitters that I have that I just work with and they're like not even a glitter acrylic and they just do what I tell them to. This one is a little bit more uh, feisty, I guess you could say. So it takes a little bit more playing around with to get it to go where I want it to, but the end results are still really beautiful. So I'm going to use that glittery, glittery teal to sculpt the dress. It gets really stuck in my brush too, but sometimes you just got to deal with the glitter for the end results. Something my husband would definitely not understand. So you know those people that have these irrational fears of things and that you just think, why? Why do they have a fear of that? Well, his is glitter. He, I don't know, he'd probably not say it's not a fear, it's just a dislike, but I swear he's afraid of glitter. If glitter is anywhere near him, he like has a panic attack and has to go take a shower. You would wonder how we could possibly be married, right? I mean, I'm a nail artist who spends 90% of my working day with glitter and he can't stand it. It's, it, yeah, it's funny. But anyways, you know, a little glitter here and there. This isn't going to hurt anybody. So we got a little bit more of the color over her ear. And then I'm going to take with white acrylic and I'm going to build her arm that's on the side. So the arm that is not holding up the snowflake swirly thing, I didn't sculpt out all the way. If you wanted to, you could sculpt that arm out and do, you know, one arm out to each side, but I figured it really wasn't worth it. That arm isn't going to hold anything and I didn't really want it to hold anything. So it didn't need to, I didn't need to take the time to do that. So now after I've got that arm started, I'm going to go back to her hair. So the acrylic, the base layer of acrylic that I used for her hair is completely set up now. So I don't have to worry about it getting kind of messed up as I'm building up layers on top of it. So I'm going to do small section by small section on top of her hair and sort of sculpt in all of these different chunks of hair. So Elsa, Elsa's hair is incredibly thick. It reminds me a lot of my own hair, actually, as far as the way that it behaves, but it has these like different PC sections. And that's something if, if you're familiar with French braids, that happens a lot. It's actually really natural when you have a French braid is you get these like different sections that separate themselves out. And so when you have that and you're sculpting that, you want to sculpt them all separately and sculpt all of these different sections that are working their way back towards that braid. And then obviously you're going to need to add that braid that's coming down over her shoulder. And now that we have her dress in place, you can sculpt that braid because it rests like right at the top of her dress. Um, like her neckline of her dress is where the braid ends. So you want to overlap that just a little bit. And same thing, I sculpted first just a base of the braid. And then I'll go through in a moment and actually do the different interlocking sections of the braid. So just do... Just like you did with the upper part of her hair or the top part of her hair, you're going to do each of those little sections of braid all on their own. So when you're doing those little sections of braid, just try to imagine that they're like V shapes almost that overlap a little bit. So there are these, these V's that angle themselves down all the way down the braid. And I know there was a little while, a while back where doing... Um, like braided nail art was a huge trend. I'm going to say that was like three, four years ago. So if you, if you ever did it with gel polish, hopefully you can take some of that knowledge that you did when you participated in that trend, if you did and apply it to sculpting a braid too, because the kind of, you know, the ideas behind it are the same. And I know that some people did some like not polish acrylic versions of that braided nail art trend. So it's kind of the same thing going back. I love how Every time there's a new, you know, flavor of the week trend that comes along, if you participate in it and you try something new, that knowledge always comes back and helps you later on. At least, usually. You never know. So now after we have that, we're going to be holding a nail form backing up to the nail, and we're going to be sculpting her arm that is extended. So the reason I'm holding the nail form backing up to the nail is my initial plan was that I was going to sculpt it so that it was just attached and and part of the nail and I didn't have to glue it on, but I ended up deciding that that was just not going to work. So having that little base of the arm sculpted and doing it like I was going to gave me a pretty good knowledge for how big the arm needed to be, even though I ended up not sculpting it just right up to it. Sometimes I do that where I can just hold a nail form backing up and then sculpt the piece that is, you know, off to the side. And a lot of times that works, but because of the fact that this has the white layer and then the flesh tone layer, it ended up just being easier to do, do it all on the side and then glue it and assemble it together. So on her hand, 
also has this very elegant almost ballet movement about her and so her hand has this very just natural relaxed almost kind of flippant way that she's holding her hand out like almost like she's saying so what you know she's got snow coming out of her hand and it's it's no big deal so try to get that vibe out into the hand <laughs> it's so tiny and you're sculpting with acrylic so it's not the easiest task necessarily but in the movements of the acrylic just try to keep it sort of relaxed and nonchalant am i asking too much of anybody <laughs> bueller no okay well after you have that first layer of white start building up the layer of the flesh tone you don't need to worry about getting it too much necessarily on the lower part of the arm i would still add it just to kind of round out the shape as you can see that i'm doing here but don't you know worry too much of the color isn't quite right because that's going to be painted anyway because she's wearing long sleeves but if you add that little bit of layer on there first it just makes the whole design a little more uniform so after you have that nail or that arm glued onto the nail then you're going to need to kind of secure everything together and make sure that there's no weird transitions between arm to nail and so take some more white acrylic and add some more layers to this base of the arm that's now being created and make sure that everything looks like it's appropriately placed and then after you have that we're going to be gluing a wire to the hand just to the very middle of the palm coming up and that's going to be the base of our little swirly snowy thing that's coming up and then at the very bottom of the wire to make sure it's attached a little bit more acrylic and now we're going to be taking and doing our acrylic paint this nail has so many different um steps to it that it's one of those that you just keep doing piece by piece and eventually the whole thing is done so for her hair I'm going to begin by doing some different shading on it and it's a very kind of like a big process because her hair has some pretty incredible layers to it so first i went through and i just did some outlines and i'm going to go through and kind of dilute them and i'm using brown acrylic paint to do this just to kind of get some of just to get her hair looking a little bit more dimensional a little less flat because her hair really does have a lot of different I don't know levels to it and a lot of different sections to it and then still using that brown paint i'm going to be using quite a bit of it actually i'm going to be doing some very basic kind of beginning sketching steps on her face so i did her nostrils and then her lips and then i'm going to go through and do um, her eyebrows and her eyes and kind of add just the first layer to all of her facial features so the reason i'm starting out all of these with brown paint instead of going straight in with the colors that you know you're going to use like a burgundy on her lips and white in her eyes and a darker brown in her eyebrows and all those different things is if you start out with a lighter brown as a sketching phase if you happen to have a line that isn't quite right it doesn't show up hardly at all in the end design once you start adding in all of those more intense vivid colors and you can just sort of pretend that these little sketch lines don't exist and you can even use a lighter brown than i did to do this to have just that first kind of layer to it so that it's sort of a less stressful time because if you go straight in with those really dark colors for your sketching or you know without doing any sketching then if you happen to make a mistake it's a huge hassle to fix it but if you start out with something that you know isn't as stressful to begin with and it's not as worrisome if you make a mistake your lines are going to go better because all of that concern that's in your head about having a line get messed up is going to make you mess up your lines it's going to make you you know get a little bit a little bit more tense maybe it's in your shoulders or maybe it's in your lower back or it's going to just affect your muscles and as soon as those muscles start to tense up you have a much better chance of getting shaky or just not moving with as fluid of movements and it's just a less a less success, a less successful scenario so doing a you know a pretty simple base to start out with is just going to improve the entire process so after you have that base done then you can fill in her lips with a red like i said or and add some purple on her eyelids and white in her eyes and then on her sleeves because she does have long sleeves like i said i'm going to paint them with a very light blue and just add all of that color onto there wherever it's Wherever it's showing i'm going to add some gold highlights in her hair and with a character like elsa where the animation is so new and it is so advanced that there's just all of these different layers and details to her face and her hair and if you're looking at the images they almost look like like real life like they're real except for obviously they have kind of that exaggerated feature thing going on but you can take however much of that as you want to do it but if you want it to be a little simpler 
and you want to see what it would look like if it wasn't quite as detailed, look at some t-shirt designs or like even some fan art. If you want to see how to tone it back, if you're not sure how to do it on your own and what things to just adjust to make it easier on you, looking at something like something like a fan art that somebody's done or, um, on Disney's website, they, you can search by character and then you can find things like cups and mugs that have the characters on. And a lot of times those are a little more simplistic in design. So you can get, even if you don't like the poses, you can kind of learn from what they did on how to simplify it for yourself. So now we're going to go through and add all the details to our eyes. I darkened them up. You want the eyes to be the darkest part of this design, which is easy since most of Elsa is just so bright and so light. Her hair, her skin, her arms, um, like the arms of her dress, everything is so light that making those eyes so intense is fairly easy because nothing else is anywhere near that dark. So just go through and keep adding details. Do as much as you can to detail her hand. And then once you're all done, apply some matte top coat over her. And then on a silicone mat, we're going to be finishing off with the last step of this, which is to make our little swirl. So with white gel paint, I'm going to just start out that, that swirl and kind of know in your head how big you want it so that you get it to be the right size and kind of play around with it. There's so many different fun shapes and variations you could do. You could omit the swirl completely and do three or five snowflakes instead and just layer up some snowflakes or, you know, switch up the shape. You can make it way bigger than I did. And then I'm going to be doing, um, so I did one swirly thing and then one snowflake. And these are both with white gel paint. And the great thing with gel paint is you don't necessarily have to worry about top coating it. It holds its shape very well after it's cured. You can just peel it off the silicone mat and you get these wonderful little handmade kind of sticker things that you can use. So we're going to be gluing those onto that piece of wire. So I used some brush on nail glue and just covered my piece of wire. And then using a tweezers, I'm going to place my swirly thing. And after that swirl is placed, I'm going to add just a little bit more nail glue to make sure that it's really going to stick and then glue on my little snowflake. And then after the snowflake is nice and stuck down, I'm also going to be adding some snowflake glitters. So I got out my silver snowflake glitters and I was trying to decide Elsa has one snowflake glitter on the end of her braid and I was going to put it on there and then I looked at it and I decided that it was too big. So I changed gears and I just glued a few of them onto my swirly thing again. I just really like those little snowflake glitters. I think they added another, another layer of dimension and glitz and glam to this whole thing. So glue those down to kind of finish it off. The one on the top of my wire was fighting me and then apply a layer of gel sealer over your swirly thing and over those little snowflake glitters and that'll help hold them in place too. And then this is done. I hope you guys are in love with this design as much as I am. I know Melody is starting to really get into Frozen so she liked this nail very very much as I'm sure you can imagine. If you do make a recreation please share it with me. I would love to see it so very much and I will see you next time. Bye!